Richie here, and this time we're doing another behind the scenes um, video. It's been a while since I had to do one of these. Well, and recently I made a post here um, saying, well, you know, what video would you want to see the behind the scenes to be updated for? And well, <laughs> got about 14 votes, and everyone wanted the soundtrack videos, which I'm actually kind of surprised by. I didn't think people would really want that, but hey, here's the video, and it's because of you guys right here decided you wanted an update to an old video, so here we go. Now, I made this video about like three years ago. Jeez, where was that time flying? And, well, I was kind of a little bit rambling in this here, just repeating my words or having to run on sentences. So what I'm going to try to do is not just, um, you know, not do that in this case, but I am going to try to make sure that, you know, I show you everything that I use for my workflow. And all this is just more or less just showing you how my workflow goes between the two real softwares I use. Sometimes three, that's Photoshop, but that's for other reasons. But for the other two, it's going to be um, Vegas right here. Vegas right here. And also the other one here is going to be called um, mu Magic Music Visual, and we are going to get into those and why I use them. But before that, um, I'm just, just kind of self-advertising, so you kind of skip ahead again if you want. But yeah, um, this is where I will post um, most of the soundtrack videos is on the Fellow Dogs with Soundtracks. It's just because I started, you know, wanting to make soundtrack videos like this here because I've seen some other people doing this for, like, video game music, which I thought was pretty cool. And, well, I decided, well, I was going to do my own twist on it or do my own way of with all this because, well, why not? And plus, I do this with the games that I have recorded and actually have com done, like, complete playthroughs for. So, <clears throat> it's not the hardest work, but it, it can be time consuming depending on how many um, you are doing at a time when it comes to these kind of videos because we're going from something like this kind of a mess here in Vegas which again I just did Diddy Kong Racing recently so you know just throwing that out there and I just said well you know what I'm gonna do a whole like soundtrack video like playlist of you know Diddy Kong Racing and we're gonna end up with this kind of result right here where we have the game itself inside like this frame here the <clears throat> the title of the game um company logos there's sometimes more than one sometimes i would put like the sega seal of approval like quality control approval whatever the, the hell they call that and then like the sega genesis logo on here and so forth that's just like one example when it comes to logos i usually try to do this mostly on like uh, a lot, not a lot of systems, because, like, for example, like, Sonic Adventure 2 came out, yes, on the Dreamcast, but also came onto the GameCube, but then after that, you got the Xbox, PS3, and PC, and, well, I'm like, well, that'll be too much here, so I'm just gonna do where the game, where it first came out, at least its first two releases, so Dreamcast, and then the GameCube. So, again, this is just, you know, how it's all gonna look and everything else so let's get right into this so the first software that i do use when it comes to all this is this guy right here and if we take a look at the website that's magic M music um, visuals right here now this right here this software and again you could probably use adobe after effects or something similar to um after effects to get the same kind of um what you call results for all of this, just as an FYI. But let's just say you want some kind of like, you know, particle background or some kind of abstract backgrounds here that's playing. Like if you're doing this for like karaoke, having a concert going on or something. Like even it says right here, it says um, this, this shows what the software can do. Perfect for your next concert or club performances whatever here and again this is just showing you know how well this works out and everything and this is on from their actual website right here if you go to gallery go to de um, demo videos and they also do have a trial thing you can try out here too 
But there's some things you can do, like, for example, you can have, like, this little particle effect going on right here, just showing that here as it is. Or you can have this meaty um, piano effects going if you like using, like, older game music or making things into a MIDI like this. Some people have also used this sort of software to make this kind of effect here as well. Like you, what you would see on YouTube or whatnot. Or what we are using this here for is for making this, you know, um, this blurred waveform right here as you see. I have used this effect in, what was it, the Pink Box Pals um, soundtrack playlist. And again, I don't remember if I did that for all of them or just like one of them of those videos so that is something that i have done before with this here and again like i said you could probably get adobe um, after effects to make some of these similar other like effects that you are seeing right here off of this um, website and again it's called magic music visuals and this is like the whole entire interface right here what you see now, this is a pretty easy um, program to learn, at least for what I'm using it for anyways. Again, I'm not doing nothing too crazy. Again, all I'm ever doing is just making this waveform right here, where my mouse is kind of hovering at. Actually, leave that there. And this is what, what the whole interface looks like. Now, right here, where I'm highlighting, these are the effects. You won't have these when you start this off. In fact, you will have this small little box right here where I'm kind of hovering at right now. Then you also going to have, you know, your preview window right here. Your input, input sources is pretty much telling the, um, the program, hey, I want to use this audio, um, this audio file for whatever that you're trying to do right so it's again it's a very simple one here and i am going to go over this here so the first off here you may be wondering what's ghosting and trails are so going back to this example right here can make this a little bit bigger put this on loop so you can kind of see for yourself so the way how this is working is this here so ghosting you're going to see kind of like I guess the best way is that uh, you see like an after image. So you have like, for example, let's see right here. So you have a example. This is like, this is what shows up before. And then as it plays a little bit um, after, we're going to slow this down. You can kind of see, you know, it was there and not. That's kind of like what ghosting is. And trails in this case is like, after, after, from my understanding, after when you use ghosting like this sort of matter, you get to see how, you know, it kind of stays for a little bit before you see the next one going. And like I said, this is kind of how it will look when it's slowed down. They say it when it's being played fast <clears throat> at normal. And before I, when I did these kind of um, videos here, some of these wave, um, waveforms were pretty rigid. Kind of like they always look like, like static, going just up and down instead of looking like nice and soft like this. So I try to give it more of a softer look. And the colors, um, colors are kind of varied because I have used lots of different colors. I haven't really settled on, okay, well, this soundtrack, it's only this set of colors or this and that. I haven't really done any of that sort of thing. I only do random colors, but we will come back to it. So, but you can kind of see when being played slow, this is how it kind of looks and everything. And with those kind of effects, that's how we get into, you know, making our waveform look like this. Now, the problem is also too, when it comes to all this is that when it comes to the waveform, the scaling, you have to have scaling on this. And the reason why I say it's because so when, when this first comes on here, it's not going to reach, like, the borders right here on the left and right borders. In fact, it's going to be, you know, a few inches in away from it here or so, kind of like where my mouse would be hovering, like, something like that. And you're going to have to stretch it out for it to fit onto, like, a full screen, so to speak. So that's why you have those. And the way how you add effects here, and I'm going to show this here to you, 
feedback so that way you know. And again, this is not really like a tutorial of how to use the software. This is just more or less my workflow and seeing how, you know, how I make these videos. So right here, you're going to go right click. You're going to go to add. You're going to go to geometry. And well, we're going to go into, I guess, polygon. Mm, no, nah, probably not polygon. Let's switch that to to spectral. All right, we're gonna see how this looks. This might uh, mess up my um, most of my can't my software recorder, but I think we should be fine. But yeah, you're gonna see how this is gonna look here. So when I play this, you know the sound down here you're gonna see how it's gonna look up here with the effects up here so let's take a look <laughs> yeah so you can kind of see how that looks there and again, I usually just do waveforms. I don't really do a spectrum, but you can do other different things with this here. So that kind of gives you an idea of how this looks. But now you may be wondering when it comes to, well, how do I just reconnect these here together? You just grab this little knob, stretch it out, and ta-da. It's back here, and it'll be the hit play again. <laughs> You can see that we're back into what we were doing from before. So like I said, this is not really a tutorial of anything. I'm just showing you how everything works. But I will show you on how to replace right here the new music right here. Because so far I have done about, if I bring this up, <clears throat> about like five of these right here. And for Diddy Kong Racing, there is about 42, 43 tracks. And I only say it that way because, well, if anyone knows, like, Document Caverns, they use it for the credits sometimes. And I think it's after the first Whiz, Whiz Pig race or the second one. They kind of use it. No, they actually, they do use it. I just forget, like, how often. But... So, like I said, it's about 42, 43. That's not the most I ever had to do. Hell, in fact, if we were to look at Day of the Tentacles, a whopping 65 of all of this, and I still have to go through all this. <laughs> so, it is quite a bit. It is a process. Like I said, it's nothing too crazy or anything, to be honest with you. But, yeah, so, I'm just showing you... You know, how much work goes into this. Like I said, this is just a workflow. Now that, let's see here. What number track we're on? We're on number five. So now we're going to go to number six right here. And it's going to be TT's thing. So once you have that replaced and everything, now you should see, should you hear the new track and see the new um, waveform going with this here too. Better stop that before we start jamming out over here. But once you have all that be done and everything, you're gonna go here to file, go to export movie, and now see for me, I have 1440p monitors, so these resolutions are gonna be higher. Now, this is gonna sound like a complete well, no duh kind of thing here, but you wanna go ahead and not only just make sure you know you have this being saved to you know your new area that you're going to be saving this out here too. But you want to hit this button that says get audio. Now, again, sounds like a complete, well, no duh kind of thing, right? Well, I have been on autopilot sometimes where when I just, you know, start doing this here, that some music tracks become a lot longer than what they're supposed to be. <laughs> For example, let's take a look here. So, if we look to look at track five right here, well... You know, the lobby theme is about a minute 53, right? Well, let's take a look at TT's theme in this here. It's a minute 26, so if you're going from, you know, 26 to, what was it, 53? Yeah, to 53, you're adding a lot of extra 
dead space here. So we're going to go here, go to the audio. We know that's the correct one. Then after that, you would just hit go and start to go from there. And I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to do this after we get done here because I do have to do this. So after all that, this is where we start to go into um, Vegas right here. And this is where things are starting to get a little bit more complicated. Well, I guess not really complicated, but more time consuming. Now, I have you. I'm using this as another like, like a preset that I made for myself when I make these kind of videos. So that way, I'm not spending a lot of time on it. Cause, to be honest with you, I like to make sure everything looks good. Cause right, right now, this looks like a giant mess. Before we even add. Oh, let's add in the gameplay, and you can see how much of a giant mess that looks with all this. <laughs> so, we're not going to do that here. But, again, like I said, I have added presets for all these, and you guys are going to see me do this in real time. Um, when I bring up this here, or if you see anything moving on this little, like, preview box, I'm working on the side, um, working with this right here, because, like I said... You're not going to be able to see anything the way how I have this set up. So I have, again, this off to the side. And you're going to see all this here working. So we're going to start this here by putting it all together with the actual frame itself right here. So first thing we're going to do here, and you're going to see this, is I'm going to say no to maintain race, the aspect. And it should have got stretched out more. But next I'm just going to go to my... Um, Pre, um, to my stuff here, my presets, and we're gonna go right here. And again, I might have to readjust this, so let's do this again. Let's see. And if I do get quiet, this is because I'm focusing, just trying to get this going here. Yeah, so here we go. So we're going to have a beat right here. It's starting to come around. Next, we're going to do the next one right here. We're on, the, we're on the logo here for the game logo. So we're going to tell it no for the re uh, aspect right there. We're going to, I have this as a preset for the N64. Oh, wait, wrong one. Uh, N64 for the Kong's logo there. There we go. Ta-da. We have it right up here ready to go. So next, we're going to go for the N64 logo. And tell no aspect ratio on this. I have a preset made for this right here. Oh, that's for the rarer, but it's almost the same. There we go. Now we have this here. Now we have Rare, the old 90s um, Rare. Now, some people might say, well, that's the wrong logo. Well, not for this time era because this is from the 1993 up until 20, 20 well, not 20, um, 2003. Jeez, I feel old saying that. But yeah, this is an old logo, and this is what we're going to be using for the soundtrack. So we're going to go here. We're going to go to Rare's logo. But I'm also going to go ahead... Let's see, do we want to keep the aspect ratio or not? Yeah, but we're going to move it right there. Hit save on that. And yeah, so this is what it looks like here so far. Ta-da, right? We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. But you can kind of see how all this here looks like. So next, we're going to do the next thing. It's pretty simple is... We're going to blur out this background here. And, well, for you guys wondering what the new thumbnail is going to look like for the for D, for Daycon Racing, this is like the new little thumbnail right here for it there. I decided to use the um, character select screen for it here. Just thought it would be cool with, like, the rainbow colors right here. And all we're going to do is just add, add a gear and blur to this because... Again, the way how this looks right now, this looks like it will be distracting right here. So having a garrison blur where non cost is kind of issue. At least that's what I like to think. So we're going to go here. If I can find it. Here we go. Garrison blur. We're going to go here. 
Now, it's on its default. I like to use either a soften or light. It just kind of depends because here's, here's soften. Here's light. Go back down again. And I think we're going to just use a light blur for this. So, yeah, so far we are coming together here. I'm going to save it here. And as you can tell, this is where, you know, it's all starting to come together finally. Now, we get into the next part of this. Uh, next part of this. So, after I would, you know, do all of this right here, what I like to do is select all these items right here. I like to create this as a group. Now, I one thing I will do is this here is I'm going to decide whether if I just want to keep the character select screen right here as just the main background for the whole for the whole thing or if I want to add different backgrounds um, for each one because it's kind of like what I did in my clay fighter one here. As you can tell. What I did for each one here is that, you know, I made, I used the background here for one. But if I go to the next one, then I use, like, the actual stage itself as a background instead here. So, like I said, I'm kind of debating this at the moment. So, this could change or I might just stick to the character select screen. Again, not 100% sure on all that. But, next... Here, we're going to start to bring in the um, gameplay and everything else. But before we do that, since this is like the opening number, what we're going to end up doing is this here. So, I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit. I already have my gameplay right here, which is this part one. And I have my gameplay way down over here, as you can tell, right here. So... What I'm going to do here is bring this over here to like the opening so that way we can start to see this here. I am going to mute this for the time being so we can see how this looks. Bring this up here. So now when we start here, when this video starts, we're going to go into sign. Okay, you see the logo. You see Diddy flying around the N64 logo. Whatever else happens. Da 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 da. And now, after this here, what I'm going to have to do is put it into a fade. Because the way how it just pops up just looks weird. But now you start to see that we have this already set here. Now, if I didn't do this before, and again, I'm going to show you what preset I use for this. I use the thing called the Blue Frame um, Game Clip. Because this is where you get the game clip to be shown right in here. And I didn't think you guys would want to see me start to um, just, like, mess with it like that. It'd just be a pain in the butt, if I'm honest with you. And, and well, as you can see, this is starting to look like, you know, what I call my typical, you know, soundtrack video and such, right? So now, this is where I'm going to have to grab... Let's see, unless I already have it on my timeline here. I don't. So now this is what I'm going to have to grab, the audio ones here, and put this here. Now, the way how this looks, it covers up all the hard work that we just did right here, right? So I'm going to tell it to stop here. Yeah, this covers up all this hard work that we did. So we're going to go right here, put this up here. Now we're going to go here to our effects. And normally I do two different effects on here. And that's going to be the chroma key um, here, right here, and the color corrector right here for this. So first off, the chroma key right here. Well, we need to get rid of this black right here. So I already have something selected. Go for black. Ta-da, there we go. But now we got to have to move this down here. I already have another preset for this. And that is, if I can find it, because I have a bunch. Here we go with the way far down here. So, the way how this looks, like this here, this is how it would look back in Magix, right here, in this little box. 
And this is, you know, you will have to stretch it out to fill up the screen here. So we're going to tell it no for the aspect ratio. And boom, there we go. We have this ready to go. Now if we are playing this here from the start. You can start to see that everything's coming together, looking good, and everything else right now, right? Now all we got to do is just the, um, the last following is give this here. Besides timing this all here to make it. Um, make this all look good here and such is going to be, well, you know, we're going to give this wave bar some color. So again, we're going to go back here to this color correct color corrector here. And again, I haven't decided what kind of colors I'm using. Again, I could catch one. I have one that's set for data tentacles, but I could end up, I don't know, probably using something else here color wise because I think white here looks boring like this so what I like to do is add saturation up here to like two point something we're gonna go ahead and make this into an orange yellow kind of right here and then we're gonna make this cow a little bit of red here so by this point if we would like to play this you can kind of see how this looks right here Yeah, you can kind of see how that looks. And again, I might change this up. I'm not 100% sure. But by this point, besides this, you know, adding some fade-ins, fade-outs, and everything. The other thing, too, I might think about changing is the N64 logo because this seems to blend in or to switch places with it. Again, well, let's take a look, see how this looks. And again, this takes a while. By right here, I just got lucky enough where I have everything where it's set to being fast and not... You know anything different so we're gonna save that go to rare yeah I like it like that better so we're gonna do this instead right here and ta-da so now we have our new setup and everything so this is how it looks and like I said um it is not too difficult to make these kind of videos. It can be time consuming if I was doing this from scratch. But instead, I am doing this with presets that I already have made. So that way I'm not <laughs> doing this from scratch. Because again, it would take a while. But yeah, so this is the final result here. And like I said, I might switch out the background right here for this. I'm not sure. Or I might just keep it. Um, other than that though, this is how it looks and at the end of this video here that, I, that I'm going to be um, posting up here and editing after everything else is done and probably give this a sharpen because my other screen capture bandy camera is kind of acting up on me. Um, yeah, you, get, you guys got to see how this looks here and yeah, like, like I said, this is pretty... Um, easy because right after all this after I have um, the logos the frame and everything set up really the only thing I'm messing with is the gameplay section and the audio wave section right here for the most part and that's really about it it's pretty easy to be honest with you so yeah I hope you all enjoy this a faster version of this here anyways and like I said at the end of this um behind the scenes video you guys are going to see how this here looks at its final so until then you all have a good one